U.S. Air Force's Project Pluto, nuclear-powered cruise missile. The United States' own nuclear-powered cruise missile program, Project Pluto, experienced in the late 1950s and early 1960s. The brief overview of the technical, environmental, and political challenges that Project Pluto faced. The Tory IE a nuclear ramjet engine. Mounted on a railroad car, the engine ran for just a few seconds in 1961. The basic goal was to build a nuclear-powered ramjet engine, bring in cool air at the front, pass it over a nuclear reactor to heat it up and make it expand, and then expel it out the back to provide thrust. The main advantage of such a system, at least in theory, is that it can fly for a much longer period compared to a chemically propelled one perhaps for days or even weeks. Though the concept is elegant and straightforward, there were a host of technical challenges. Theodore Merkel, the director of Project Pluto, identified these in a 1959 report titled, The Nuclear Ramjet Propulsion System. The first challenge was the size and durability of the reactor. Most commercial nuclear reactors are large, heavy, and surrounded by many tons of concrete. This one, by contrast, needed to be small and light enough to fly. But it also had to be durable enough to withstand stress from extreme pressure changes, temperature changes, and the forces created when the missile accelerated or changed course. Each of these forces on its own could be expected to generate pressure on the scale of thousands of pounds per square inch. All in all, the technical challenges led Merkel to propose in his report no fewer than ten major research and development areas which must be entered if one wishes to actually produce such an engine. Among the issues that didn't much concern Merkel, However, was the prospect of spewing fission fragments out of the reactor and into the atmosphere. He calculated that a 490 megawatt reactor might produce somewhat less than 100 grams of fission product, and that the quantity released into the airstream might be a few grams. Edwin Lyman, acting director of the Nuclear Safety Project at the Union of Concerned Scientists, recently contextualized Merkel's assessment. In an email to Defense One, Lyman noted that at the time, nuclear weapon states were still engaged in atmospheric testing, so there wasn't a whole lot of concerns about releasing additional radioactivity into the environment. Attitudes have obviously changed since then. Beyond that, if it were ever deployed, the Project Pluto missile would fly at near treetop level at three times the speed of sound, according Greg Herkin, a Cold War historian who wrote about Project Pluto for the May 1990 issue of Air and Space magazine. This flying Chernobyl would not only create a deafening roar of 150 decibels but also produce a lethal shockwave not to mention the wake below the missile, which the red-hot reactor would also probably scorch. It's almost shocking, then, that the project continued for seven and a half years before people realized that the environmental and health-related problems would, in turn, lead to political problems. First, where would one test fly a nuclear reactor? If a test in the Nevada desert went awry, it could end up wreaking havoc on an American city. One bright idea was to use a tether. Another was to conduct the test over the Pacific and, at the end, ditch the reactor into the ocean. Even in those earlier, happier days of the atomic age, it's unlikely that government officials or American citizens would have approved of either. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.